Hey, how's it? So yeah, check this out. A soldering station with seat sleep. What is seat sleep? It's when the soldering station goes to sleep once the handle makes contact with the holder. Sleep lowers the temperature to a set point. Another great feature is that this station supports four different tips. It supports JBC C245, Hako T12 or T15, JBC C210, or Hako T18 or 936 clones. My previous soldering station wasn't a soldering station at all. It was a portable soldering iron, the Hako FX600. I just wanted a faster, easier way to lower the temperature while the soldering iron was sitting. Leaving a soldering station at working temperature really shortens the tip life. Lowering the soldering iron temperature while the iron is sitting extends tip life. So I decided to try out these T12 clones. These also provide a sleep feature. But the minimum time for the station to go to sleep is one minute when the handle is at rest. So then I found a Aixun T3A which provides seat sleep, or what they term as dormancy. This is an awesome station. You can also use C245, T18, and T12 tips. Later, while browsing AliExpress, I ran into this soldering iron controller. This is the controller used for the custom soldering station featured at the beginning of the video. Here's the instructions on how to wire the various handles for the controller. There are also various screen sizes and types to choose from. You can also find other controllers which provides different screen sizes and screen colors on AliExpress. The controller arrived in this carefully packed box. controller came in ESD safe packaging. It also came with these supplies, which are the knob, GX12-5 aviation socket and plug, a 10k ohm resistor to make a T12 handle, which we'll get into later, and two mercury switches which is used to wake up the station when using time sleep, which we're not using in this video. Overall construction of the board looks excellent. I made these connectors for the IEC main socket needed for the power supply. The power supply I chose was this 24 volt LED driver. Although make sure the power supply you choose can provide up to 8 amps. To connect the power supply to the soldering station case, I just chose to use GX12 aviation connectors. The initial test of the board went well. By the way, the Hako T12 and T18 tips only require 24 volts and 3 amps, while the JBC C245 requires 24 volt 8 amps. The flickering of the screen is not noticeable when viewing in person. This is what you would normally see. Additionally, the JBC C245 tips require 12 volts and 6 amps. So I came up with this circuit. 
which includes a 24-volt external power supply connecting to an enclosure which houses the rest of this circuit, which includes an internal 12-volt step-down power supply. Here's the step-down power supply connected to the 24-volt LED driver. The step-down power supply is variable, so the output needs to be adjusted to 12 volts. I chose this compact enclosure from Amazon. Now to cut and drill out the various holes needed for the connectors and switches. This is a double pole double throw switch needed to switch between 12 and 24 volts. These holes are for the aviation and seat sleep connectors. I'm using this low torque driver along with this self-centering drill bit to drill holes on this piece of plexiglass. I'm going to use this piece of plexiglass for the front panel. The plexiglass was cut to the size of the front panel. Now I'm using the original front panel as a jig to drill the holes. These countersink bits are used to countersink the holes needed for the tapered screws. I'm going to use a protective film as a template for the screen hole. Doing this, I can see where to put the protective film to shield the paint. Yeah, this is going to be painted, so you need to mask off the other side of the panel. Now to lift this off without scratching the plexi. The film peeled off nicely and did not chip the paint, although it looks like some fumes got underneath the film and reacted with the plexi. If I could do this over, I would use Windex and spray on the plexi to position the film, like how you would on RC car decals, because cleaning that stuff off was just a major pain. I needed to remove some material from the 12 volt power supply case to make room in the enclosure. The bottom of the power supply shows the polarity of the input and outputs. Scoring the aluminum case makes cutting easy.
you can see how tight everything is in the case. I really like how the front panel turned out. It's even tighter with all the wiring and connectors. For the GX-12 handle connector, I cut it off and moved it to the rear. Not gonna lie, I always get butterflies on the first turn on. Oh, uh, wait. Here, you can see the T-12 handle is recognized. Height and width is the same as a T-12 clone, although this is shorter. The 12 volt circuit is working. And here the screen shows that the 24 volt circuit is working. To recap on the wiring, the positive output from the 24 volt external power supply goes to an on off switch, which then goes to a common leg on a double pole double throw switch. One of the output legs then goes to the positive input on the soldering station controller. The other output pin goes to the positive input pin of the internal 12 volt power supply. The positive output of the 12 volt internal power supply then goes to the other common pin on a double pole double throw switch. The output that is closed when a 24 volt is going into the input of the 12 volt power supply also connects to the positive input on a soldering station. All negative terminals are then connected to the negative output terminal of the 24 volt power supply. If you're a beginner, the double pole double throw switch is easy to miswire. So just go to Amazon and get this double pole double throw switch. The link is in the description. Also, since the controller does not have an earth ground connection, connect earth ground to one of the negative terminals, also called DC ground, on the output terminals of the 24 volt power supply. You can see an example with the green wire here. This will sink leakage voltage from the tip to earth, making the station ESD safe. The handles use a GX12-5 plug. Pin 1 is leak detection. Pin 2 is a temperature sensor. Pin 3 is the ID pin, pin 4 is ground, and pin 5 is positive. Each one of these pins goes to a point on each respective tip. The ID pin for the JBC C245 is shorted to ground and requires 24 volts and at least 8 amps. The ID pin for the Hako T12 requires a 10 kilo ohm resistor to ground and requires 24 volts and 3 amps. The ID pin for the JBC C210 is left floating so there's no connection and requires 12 volts and 6 amps. The ID pin for a Hako T18 tip requires a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor to ground and requires 24 volts and 3 amps. So here's the finished product. You can see I cut slits in the case to vent heat. Also the extra large front legs tilt the display up. The tip chain socket connects to this point on soldering iron holders that support it. Seat sleep is connected to the metal soldering iron holder. This one is an Ixun T3A C245 holder. For C245 tips, just use the Ixun T45 handle. These can be had for $13 shipped. Best of all, it doesn't require modification. For T12 tips, I recommend using the Sugon T12 handle. It has a metal front that will support seat sleep, but you will need to replace the plug. For C210 tips, I recommend the Ixun T3B T210 handle, although again, you will need to replace the plug. Compare how small the C210 tips are compared to the other tips. Really recommended only for fine soldering jobs. The handle is also smaller than the Ixun T3A T245 handle. For T18 tips, I modified this Raygon handle.
not only will you need to replace the plug, but you'll need to replace the heater with an AT936B heater. Seat sweep is set for 150 degrees and is set for 10 minutes before it goes into soft shutdown. This is the second user interface and is in preset temperature mode. Turning a knob changes the temperature between four preset temperatures of your choosing. A short press changes to regular set temperature mode where turning the knob either lowers or raises the temperature. The step amount of 5 degrees seen here is adjustable. A long press of the knob gets you into the settings. Long presses go back in the menu. This is the first user interface in regular set temperature mode. A short press changes to preset temperature mode, although in this interface it does not show the four preset temperatures. Whereas in the second UI, you see all four preset temperatures. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please! Oh, and the next video is going to be modifying the handles. Laters! Mm -hmm.